Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. And we've noticed lately that our subscriber count has taken a big jump. So welcome if you're new to our channel. We really hope these videos are helping you in your preparations. Now, if this is the first time you clicked on one of our videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we've got new content coming to you every single week. Today, we have a walkthrough. And in this video, we'll show you how to answer a certain type of non-verbal reasoning question that we like to call grids. Let's take a look. In these question types, you'll be given a grid made up of either four tiles or nine tiles. And one of those tiles will be blank. Now it's our job to try and pick the tile out of the five options that fits best according to rules that you need to find out for yourself. So let's take a look at our first example. In this question, it's a four tile grid and the grid missing is here in the bottom right. Now, you've got to take a look at what the question gives you and start forming some rules and some hints that can help you to pick the best fit. So what you can do in this type of question is try to narrow down what's happening because it could be a number of things. It could be some kind of transformation moving across the grid. It could be moving down the grid. It could even sometimes be moving diagonally. And when it's not a transformation, it could quite simply be a line of symmetry down the middle, or of course, a line of symmetry across like that. There are lots of different options here. So the best course of action is to take a good look at the grid to start with. Now, I can see a link here straight away going across the grid. Hopefully you can too. In the top left, we have a triangle with its base at the bottom like that, and it's white in the middle. Moving across the grid, we have a triangle again, but it's been rotated. It's been rotated 90 degrees clockwise, and it's also changed color. So if I was thinking what's happened to the shape, well, number one, it's been rotated, and number two, the color has changed. So has the shape changed? No. Let's take a look at the bottom then. Let's try and apply that same transformation moving across into our blank tile. So we start off with this shape. Step one was that it's been rotated. So I'm going to rotate the shape 90 degrees clockwise. It should look like that. Now I can use deduction. It can't be A. It can't be D. That's rotated the wrong way. And it can't be E that hasn't rotated at all. So we're left already with B or C. Now let's take a look at step two to get our final answer. The color has to change. We went from white to gray. So we're going to go from white to gray, shade it in like that. And it should be obvious the answer is C. So our first top tip for grids is to take a good look at the grid you're given and try and spot those patterns, those movements, those changes and build up a set of rules. Okay, so let's take a look at a second question. Still a four tile grid, this time Let's see if we can use those techniques. We can build up some rules to see what's happening here. Again, hmm, it looks like the missing tiles in the top right. So let's go to the bottom because we've got two tiles next to each other. It does look as though there's some kind of link going sideways again. Just be warned, it's not always sideways. It could be up and down, but this question looks like it's sideways. If I'm looking and using my spatial reasoning as well for this question, I do notice that it's almost as if there's a line of symmetry down the middle. So I think one of the rules is that there is a line of symmetry and that's going to apply to the top tiles too. Also, the shading changes for some of the shapes, not for the triangle. So this black triangle does stay the same. It stays as a black triangle, but the bottom two shapes definitely swap. Can you see here this shape? goes from shaded to blank, and the outer shape goes from blank to shaded. So those two shadings invert, they swap. So our next top tip for this question type is to draw on the paper. I'm going to start sketching what it might look like with the first step of symmetry. Um, it doesn't have to be spot on, just something rough for you to work from. So we've got the star, the other shape on the side, and now we're gonna have a square over here. So that just using step one means we can probably get rid of a few. We can get rid of B because that shape's going the wrong way. Uh, and the rest, well, yes, we can get rid of E because it's a triangle at the top, it needs to be a star. So we've got three options, A, C, or D. Now, hopefully you can tell that that black star needs to stay black because we're going to match the bottom rule. The black triangle stays black. Um, so in fact here, wait a minute, if I can get rid of A, 
I can get rid of C. Just from deduction and using the first two rules, the answer must be D. Move on. Now, don't be put off by this question. This one has nine tiles, but it's still the same system. We've got one tile missing. We need to figure out what's going on. This one is slightly different. Remember at the start of the video, I said there are lots of things to look out for. We've looked mainly at transformation so far, going across or up or down. You can also get grid questions that use a set. So each row could be a set. I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean here. Look at the top row. I've got one tile that uses dots, one tile that uses lines, and another tile that's a shape made up of lines. So they're joined together somehow. Let's see if we can go to another row that's completed in this one, the bottom one. Okay, do we have the dots? Yes, in the middle. Do we have the lines? Yes, on the right. And do we have the shape made up of lines? Yes, we do. So you can see there's a set. In each row, there is a set of three. So let's look at our missing tile row. We've got the lines here. We've got the dots, which means we're looking for a shape. Now, unfortunately, this shape doesn't really help us because all of our options here are shapes in themselves. And that's one of our other top tips. Sometimes it helps to take a quick glance at the answers. It could save you time. So let's take a look now and dive deeper. What's joining these sets together? Why are they a set? Well, let's look at the top one. We've got three lines, okay. We've got three dots. So the dots and the lines must be linked with the same number. And this shape here, one, two, coming out, three. That's made up of three lines with a base at the bottom, okay. Do you notice how if you take the dotted tile with a base at the bottom, joining those two dots together, and a line from the center joining the top dot, we make this shape in the set. Let's just check that works down the bottom. Make a base with the bottom two dots, yes. Go from the center of the base up to the other two dots. Yes, we've got a match. So let's see what shape we make by joining up the dots in the same way in the middle row. So let's make a base. So we're gonna to have to have a base that follows the pattern of the other rows. Go to the center of the base and line out to the dot and to this dot and to that dot there. Hmm, it looks like we have a shape and we built it without doing any deduction but by following the rules in the grid. And it looks something like this. Now, fingers crossed, looking at the options, we have something that looks the same. A can't be right, that's six anyway, it doesn't work. B is just four lines, it doesn't work. We know it has to be five from our rule that we established earlier. C, that is five lines, I'll just come back to that one. D is five lines as well, and E, okay. Let's see which one matches our shape best. And you can see the only one with a base at the bottom, which matches the bottom row, matches the top row, matches the middle row, and follows the rules all the way through. The best fit has to be E. The thing that makes grid questions so tricky is there are a lot of different ways to approach it. And what one person does for a question might be different to what another person does for the exact same question. And they might come to the same correct answer. So for this question here, it's something different again. It's not a group, like in the rows we just did together. It's not really a transformation either. We might call what happens in this one a combination puzzle. And that's the only hint I'm going to give you. So think of rows, think of columns, but there's something to do with combining and rotating the shapes. That's it, no more hints from me. So if you think you know what goes in that missing blank tile, at the center in the bottom row, then be sure to leave us a comment down below and we'll get back to you to see if you can really crack this grid question. Hopefully those top tips help you to crack these questions every single time. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to smash that subscribe button because we've got so much more content heading your way in the future. We'll see you next time.